suffer from those attacks when you yourself publish scurrilous articles in your own servile press under an alias. Listen to the man. He indicts me for hypocrisy. He invented the word. Well, he pulled the strings of his congressional puppets to try and destroy me. I had to fight back or crawl away in defeat. You know, I know what's behind such vicious personal attacks. You, Mr. Jefferson, look down on me as socially your inferior. I warn you, sir, I will tear off the veil and show you for what you are. A secret voluptuary who wants to be another Caesar. Mr. Hamilton, you, no. let me oh, remind you, you. Stop it. I'll be damned if I will put myself on the rack for a second term unless you two stop these petty quarrels and pull together. <laughs> I've decided to refuse a second term. My God. Sir, you can't leave. So that I don't lose all influence between now and the time when I announce my leaving office, I ask you all to please keep my decision a secret. Sir, how can you do this? Well, my time is running out. I'm getting old. My usefulness to this country is at an end. Yes, sir. President, you please stop. Useful, but we need you now more than ever. Without you, we could splinter into three hostile nations. Sir, you please. must. I'm going home. <laughs> it's called champagne. Mr. Jefferson says a monk by the name of Dom Perignon invented it. Hmm. I feel as bubbly as this wine, now that I know you're determined to leave office. Happy birthday. Thank you. Owls are here. I must thank Eliza for a very considerate letter she wrote to me. Would you excuse me? I agree. Mrs. Powell, good evening. You must taste this new wine. It's called Champagne. It might put a smile on your face. Mr. President. Don't think I didn't appreciate that long letter you wrote to me, urging to give up the presidency, but you see... Sir, would you walk with me outside? Sir, as your dear friend, you must permit me to speak from my heart. Oh, you need no permission to do that. I know you feel diffidence about your abilities. You think some other younger leader would make a better president, but you're wrong. You are indispensable to this nation. Mrs. Powell. Your retirement would be a disaster. No man is indispensable. I know how sensitive you are in matters of public opinion. But people will say that ambition was the mainspring of all your acts. Some will even say that you foresaw the collapse of the government and fled to keep from being caught in the crash. Yes, but none of that's true. In matters of public opinion, truth is what people think it to be. I am not concerned about what other people think. You've always been concerned. It's your nature. Sir, are you certain you want to leave when you're needed the most? Thank you for a wonderful birthday. <laughs> you don't look any older. Hmm. You see, that's why I love you so much. Uh, you must remind me to tell Mr. Jefferson how much we enjoy that bubbly wine. Hmm? You know, they badgered me all night, Randolph, Knox. To accept the second term is the only thing that Jefferson and Hamilton have agreed on in age. And Eliza? How do you feel? Selfishly, I would pack our bags tonight and slip away without anyone knowing. But you're not just mine anymore. I'm the president's wife. You belong to all the people. And you must decide how much they need you.
I'm sorry, dear. I don't help very much, do I? Forget what I said, George. You've always done what's right. mob has besieged William Dewar's mansion and threatened to hang him, and you too. Mr. Wolcott, order our federal marshals to rescue Dewar and take him to debtor's prison. Yes, sir. They blame Dewar and you for the financial collapse. at the uh, Treasury, an emergency. Another one or the same one? I'm not sure how long it'll take. Don't you, you really ever do cared. that again. No really cared about me before. I didn't mean to scare you, Alex. I just wanted you to come. Don't. I can't live without you. You don't mean that. It's not true. It is. It is. It's over. Please don't leave me. It's over. This is the... Uh, this is the last loan I'll ever give your husband. this country's prospects since you have time. With our victory in the elections and the support of the people in the streets who rejoice at the French Revolution, the time is now to conquer Hamilton. Thanks, sir. I agree. We've already proven that the man's followers have enriched themselves through shady deals. But not even Dewar going to jail has weakened Hamilton's hold over the president. No, we must nail the man himself. Yes, but how? Covers his tracks like a fox. Gentlemen, a man who once worked for me and is now in jail for fraud wants to talk with the Jeffersonian leaders. He says he has it in his power to hang the Secretary of the Treasury. Betsy? Betsy? Are you all right? I'm all right. A good omen when a candle is dropped and stays lit. Are you sure you don't feel faint? I'm fine. You don't have to treat me like Wedgwood China. I won't break. We don't have to wait any longer. I really am completely recovered. I have missed you so, my dearest. When Mr. Wolcott leaves, I'll be waiting for you. Hamilton for disturbing you so late. 
But there's something that we must tell you. I was working late anyway. Come into my office, gentlemen. Deputy, Mr. Wilcock, Mr. Monroe, Mr. Venable, Mr. Mueller, Mr. Wilcock. Gentlemen. We had hoped to speak with you in private, Mr. Hamilton. Well, I have nothing to hide from my friend. Obviously, it's something serious, or such august Jeffersonians wouldn't be disturbing me so late. And I feel brandy. Thank you, no. Then have at me, sir. Today we visited a jail where a man named James Reynolds is being held. Do you know the man, sir? Yes, I know the man. He accuses you, Mr. Hamilton, of using your office to line your pockets with speculators' gold. <laughs> you believe him? At this moment, we really don't know what to believe. I will turn my pockets inside out. If you can find any gold there, you're a master of alchemy. Mr. Hamilton. You know, my wife is from one of the great New York families, yet you take the word of a despicable rogue like Reynolds against me. So we didn't say that we believe Is this it man. true, as I've heard whispered too many times behind my back, that you still regard me as a bastard from the West Indies? The whore child. Sir, we're not accusing you of anything. We're merely giving you the opportunity to answer this man Reynolds. Yes, you shall know all about Mr. Reynolds. And his wife, who took me to her bed. Has the gentleman told you about that? Mr. Hamilton, we don't wish to pry into your private life. I'm an adulterer, gentlemen. Sir, it's all right. A fornicator. I allowed the woman's husband to extort loans from me in exchange for his wife's favors until I couldn't live with my own infamy. There you have it, my friends. Born in shame to a woman accused of whoring, I have perpetuated my shame. But I have never stolen a farthing, nor gained one through the illegal or unethical use of my office. You have the truth. Do what you want with it. Now we can destroy him. Hmm. Go along with his wife and children. Like magic. It will remove him from his favorite position at the president's side. But is revealing such a sordid alliance our right? A man's private life but remain just that, private. And I've no wish to see Washington, whose affection for Hamilton is so obvious, hurt by such a revelation. Mr. Hamilton knows we know. Let that be enough for now. You're refusing our one chance to finish him. Oh, there'll be another. I cannot believe that having set out a feast for his friends to devour, he has not himself spooned up some of the juicier tidbits. And perhaps the time is ripe to have the House demand of Hamilton a complete accounting of all the acts of the Treasury since the government began. If it's done so late in the session that the man hasn't time to prepare such a complicated report before adjournment, it will increase popular suspicions about his honesty. The charges can then be considered in the autumn by the new more anti-Hamilton House by which time hard evidence against him might have turned up. Why, Mr. Monroe, do you have an instinct for politics? Yes. If we are to hang Hamilton, let it not be for his lust, but for his greed. I wondered what had happened to you after the post rider came. Mm. News from France? Madame Lafayette, her husband is still in prison. She pleads with me to rescue him. How can I explain to her that as chief executive of a country, I cannot interfere in another nation's affairs, but also undoubtedly bring down the wrath of our Republicans? It is done, Mr. President. You have been unanimously elected to a second four-year term. Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. I... 
Forgive me if I dishearten Mrs. Washington. I know she was not anxious for you to serve again, but... Mrs. Washington and I have had so little untroubled time in the past 16 years. Why shouldn't we both grieve at being condemned to four more of such wretchedness? Perhaps I can somewhat lift your spirits, Mr. President. I have reconsidered my determination to leave the government. The tide which seemed to flow toward monarchy is now carrying us back to a people's government. Monarchy? <laughs> Are you referring to the president, sir? Sir, I meant those who would use you. Have you so little confidence in my judgment that you imagine I could be used by anyone? I spoke without thinking, forgive me. But I think you should know that Mr. Hamilton has not been absolved. The House has found some irregularities in his report and a resolution based on a number of extremely serious charges has been drawn up. If passed by the full House, Mr. Hamilton will be forced to resign. You wanted to see me, sir? Hmm. I have other things on my mind besides apples. What do you think? Tasty. Just tasty. Delicious. It's called an Albemarle Pippin. Mr. Jefferson developed it. Oh, go ahead, finish it. It's not laced with poison. I suspect you're making a point, sir, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't want to see you hurt, Alex. But I must tell you that you are under suspicion. Under suspicion? Yes, there are people who are investigating certain rumors, accusations about your activity. Rumors? Accusations. Malignant lies. No, you don't have to. That their speculation in stocks is no fault of the government. Laws don't speculate, people do. And the charge, sir, that I'm seeking a crown for you is ridiculous. The way to establish a monarchy is surely not to build a republican government on a sound financial foundation as I am doing, but rather to undermine the government as my critics are doing. Are you going to stand by and let my enemies nail me to the cross? I have faith in you, Alex. But as president, I must allow this investigation to proceed. Trust. Trust in the legal system. Trust. I always thought I could put my trust in men. Especially one man whom I admired above all others. I was mistaken. Good day, sir. Mr. Hamilton, if you ever go back to the law, you'll have me as a client. Only you could orchestrate so brilliant a defense. Thank you. I thought you should hear it from me. I've been cleared. Jefferson thought he could hang me with unsubstantiated charges, but he was wrong. The House soundly defeated the indictments. Good. Good. I know you're still hurt that I didn't do more to try to protect you from, how did you phrase it? legislative persecution. But I knew you'd be cleared. At least we both agree on that. But I couldn't be swayed by friendship, Alex. I acknowledge your right, sir, to uh, be impartial. But perhaps unduly, I expected more. Uh, 
I must go. Good day, sir. I'm sorry you missed Martha. She and the children are enjoying a ride in the countryside. I left my needlepoint to enjoy a few moments with the great Washington. Obviously, your flowers know who's president. They're in full bloom while ours are still sleepy. Yes, well, I brought them from home. I spend as much time as I can out here. Garden puts problems in their place. Breeds new hope. Amid all our troubles since independence, you, Mr. Washington, are the only one who gives me a sense of glorious destiny. The country would be lost without you. <laughs> and so would Eliza Powell. <laughs> My dear. Uh... It's true. I know it seems as if I have all a woman could want. A splendid house, a successful husband. But none of this means as much to me as your friendship. And I have to say it. I yearn for something more than friendship. Well, I'm flattered beyond all measure, my dear. Friend. Dearest George. You are so gallant. And as frustrating as your highborn Jack must be for his mares. So, all the breathless whispers behind fluttering fans are merely baseless rumor and wishful fantasy. victory at Vomi. I'm very concerned about Lafayette. He escaped the Jacobins, you know, only to be jailed in Austria. Mr. President, support of that bloody revolution in France has become an American passion. Our homegrown revolutionaries feed on all this popular enthusiasm to further their own designs. Alex, you must stop this chronic suspicion of your opponents. They used to sing God Save Washington. on behalf of the President of the United States and all his countrymen. I am as much a delegate to the American people as to the government, and I am empowered to negotiate a new treaty establishing even closer relations between France and the United States! Hysteria has seized the United States since those uh, madmen in Paris declared war on England. Mr. Ambassador, what can we do to prevent this country from entering the war? I share your apprehension, sir. But my government will use her control of the seas to blockade France. With the pro-French mood of our people, that would force the United States into war with England. What is your president's position? For peace. Passionately. But not at the price of national honor. But uh, be assured, I will exert every influence I have to uh, prevent my country from entering the war on the side of France. Careful, my friend. Or you could be accused of treason next. I am no Benedict Arnold. 
My very life is dedicated to the peace and prosperity of the United States, which is why I expect you, Mr. Hammond, to warn your government against any aggressive act which might give our rabid pro-French zealots cause to demand war. To reason among friends. I assume, Mr. Jefferson, that you are aware of Freneau's latest outrage. The man claims to know from a source close to the government that the president signed the neutrality proclamation because the Anglophiles threatened that if he had not, they would have cut off his head. Has the man no shame? Sir, if one is to have a free press, I do not need to be reminded of the virtues of newspapers free to print the truth. But this man, for no, knows neither truth nor honesty. He says that I shut myself up like a king. That I keep only my own counsel like a king. He even accuses me of celebrating my birthdays like a king. We must all, at one time or another, Pay the piper for the privilege of unbridled journalism. Mr. Jefferson, call off your dog. And what do you suggest? That I threaten to withdraw his appointment as translator? Freneau's newspaper exposes those who would turn our constitutional democracy into a monarchy. Oh, nonsense. You can count on the fingers of one hand those who would seriously advocate an American king. God, all I can take of government by rumor and innuendo. And as for the accusation that I am now Hamilton's cat's paw and thus anti-French, I am extremely grateful to those Frenchmen who died fighting for us. But their current government seems on the verge of tearing itself to pieces, thus preparing the way for a despot. But will you receive Genet, the minister from France? This man must not be allowed to bring war here. Mr. President, may I present Citizen Genet, Minister of the Republic of France. Our warmest welcome, Citizen Genet, on behalf of all of our people. It is our desire to live in peace and harmony with all nations, and particularly France. Ah, my dear President Washington, to serve my country by paying tribute to you, the greatest citizen of all, who showed the way for our revolution, is my dearest wish. Thank you, Citizen Genet. Now, from affairs of the heart to affairs of state, eh? You have expressed a willingness to enter into a more liberal treaty of commerce with us. I bring full power to make such a treaty. Excellent. Our national convention lays open our colonies to your use without your helping defend them. We see in you, George Washington, the only person on earth who can love us sincerely and deserve to be so loved. I will claim no more of your time. We will, in the future, I trust, not only lift many a glass together, but speak to each other from the heart. Ah, no, no, I can escort myself out, my dear Jefferson. We are all citizens now, and so do not stand on ceremony. Mr. President, my dear, dear friend, Amazing. The man offers everything and expects nothing. Well, Citizen Genet clearly hopes the United States will nurture American privateers who will supply the French West Indies now cut off from the homeland by the British fleet. It's not out of affection, but out of necessity that the French open her colony so freely to us. Yes, presumptuous Frenchman has been commissioning American ships to challenge the British Navy. Can this man, supposed to be a diplomat, not understand that such behavior is in violation of our neutrality? He is only acting, sir, as would the representative of a bloody, illegal government which has overthrown a legitimate king. Oh, no, Mr. Hamilton, I too deplore the executions, but this is a revolution. And rather than lose the enterprise on which the liberty of a whole nation depends, I would tolerate such transgressions. I can't believe my ears. And most citizens agree with me. Gentlemen, we are not here to debate the merits of revolution, but to 
decide what to do about Citizen Genet and the British ships he has encouraged to be captured, would you please address the issue? The prizes must be returned to the British. And the privateers ordered out of American waters? Absolutely not. We are no longer British cat's paws. May I, Mr. President, suggest a compromise? Yes, please, Mr. Randolph. The prizes should not be returned to the British. Mr. Randolph, will you allow the Attorney General to finish, please? However, future trouble must be avoided by ordering these American ships, commissioned by the French, out of our ports. <laughs> this is pure waggling, Mr. Randolph. But it is what we will do. Will you listen to me? The President, listen to me! The old hypocrite! He sold us to the British for a crown! Down with Washington! All the President wants is peace! Trust him! It's you we don't trust, Hamilton! The old man's your puppet! You're the one! Put him on his knees to the great bully the president! The president, no, the the president wants peace. Shut the bastard up! Trust this him. is our meeting! We've heard enough! Damn King Lover! King Lover! John, go! such word in the revolution's lexicon. All matters must be known by the people. I see you alone. It's urgent. Uh, forgive us, citizens. Your secretary of state would seem to be deficient in fraternity. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is so urgent, citizen, that it could not wait for me to drain another tankard of your excellent my friend, I must warn you, what you have just done by arming the little Sarah to attack British shipping is a double violation of the Neutrality Proclamation. You must assure me, Citizen Minister, that that ship will not set sail till the facts can be laid before the President. I, Citizen Genet, warn your President. His policies and actions are contrary to the wishes of the American people, who are not serfs, as that old man seems to think. Sir, I and I warn you, Citizen Secretary, don't try to stop the little Sarah from leaving. She is guarded by high-spirited American patriots who love France. Blood will be spilled. You, sir, would threaten to attack the United States in her own harbor? And you goaded Kentucky frontiersmen into threatening secession if Washington won't drive the Spanish out of Louisiana. The president was right. <laughs> You would cheerfully bring us to war, a secession. Oh, no, citizen The ale has indeed gone to your head, citizen minister, and you had best sober up before you seriously compromise all those in the government who support France. Philadelphia is the cradle of, of liberty. Why in the devil's hell should we still have relics of royalty? There's a George II still on the front of Christ Church. Down with it. Come on. Why waste time on stone monarchs when we can tear down a flesh and blood one? The president owned Washington's house! Back up to your rooms. We want to see. No. Go back upstairs and wait there until I come for you. Now. Sir, that crowd, what do they want? I don't know. Stay back from the window. Brothers! <laughs> 
George. 